See, I, I clean, we all clean the house many times, but you can clean the house in a manner to hurry up and get it done and go do something else. Or you can say, okay, Lord, I've got today and I don't have to really do nothing. I think I'm going to put this certain CD on and it's going to play some good gospel music and I'm going to crank it up loud and I'm going to enjoy my day. See, as I'm doing stuff in the house, I don't always hear the words on that CD. It could have been anything playing. Amen. But don't you know when the presence of the Lord is in the room, whether you understand the words or not, it could have been playing a whole different Amen. It still fed my soul. Your soul feeds on what you put in it. Amen. Amen. If you got old rock music playing, I love all kinds of music. I will tell on myself. There is hardly any genre of music I do not like. I am a music person. I can flip through the channel on scan and I probably can sing along with anything it lands on. Amen. I'm telling on myself because I love music. Amen. But I know that if I need something for my soul, I'm not going to get it from the rock. I'm not going to get it from the country station. Although from time to time, they may play a gospel song. The majority of the time, they're all going to hear junk. Amen. I was listening the other day, and I'll just tell you, if you've heard this song, it's extremely perverted. It's talking about blowing a whistle, and I'll just leave it at that. Our children are being told filth. Amen. Pure life filth. It don't matter where it's coming from. It can be your TV, and I'm not preaching against music. I just told you I love music. I'm not preaching against TV. Amen. I have like four, okay? I'm telling you, know what you put in your soul. You may say, well, yes. I don't really know if I even believe in a soul. No medical doctor ever found a soul. Amen. How do I know there's even a soul that exists? Maybe it's just something the Lord's talking about. Amen. There's a soul because I feel it burn at times. I feel it inside there and it ain't heartburn. Amen. Amen. I feel Placed this together. And I thought I was going to be helped to her. 
And she has me stand on this thing that's a ball on top that's flat on the bottom. Now, I don't know if you've ever stood on one. They're called a BOSU ball. And when you climb up on this thing, you're climbing up on a ball. Okay, so can you imagine? You've seen them in the circus acts, right? I mean, as far as I know, I'm not a circus act, and I can't do that very good. So what's Lisa do? I've got this trainer in front of me that's like this, in her spotting position. Just like Christ is right there in his spotting position every time you need him. Come on. And what did I do? I get on this ball and I'm teetering. No, I'm going this way and I'm, I'm back off. I can't do it. And I get back up there. The whole time she's standing here like this and all I have to do is place my hands on hers. And I'm refusing to do so. What does that say about me? Amen. And my spiritual law, what does that say about me? Now, I perfect. I don't think you would have gone on that ball and grabbed that person's hands. Now I may be wrong, but I'm telling you, you're probably like me. And you probably would have thought I got this. I can do this. See, women of God, I'm trying to tell you today, you think you got it. You think you can do it. You think you got it all figured out. Amen. But you ain't even come close. Can I get real with you tonight? Can I tell you, you ain't even scratched the surface of what God really wants in your life. Amen. Since she's 11, we won't ask how many years now. I heard how she answered that, amen. Amen, a long time, praise God. I, I've been saved since I was 16, and I've been saved like almost 20 years. I'll give mine away. Some of us have been barely saved. But like the old song, you ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. I still ain't got a baby, Lucy. I got a lot I can learn. The Lord taught me when I went on that Bosu ball and did not reach for help. He pricked my spirit and he said, you do be the same way. You say, Lord, I got this, and you're teetering around, and you're about to fall, and all you got to do is take my hand, and you're too selfish, and you're too stubborn to take my hand. Yes. Are you going to fall weak when he's standing right there saying, take my hand? I got this. I'm here to help you, amen. God's so good. See, I love it when he pricks our spirit. I love it as I was cleaning this house, how he started working with me. And as hour after hour went on, I kept cleaning. And I stopped, and I looked, and I thought, it looks kind of like it did when I started, but I know it's a whole lot cleaner. And I thought about, the reason it looked like it did is because I was cleaning the unseen. Yeah. Anybody with me on that? Yeah. If you ain't got there, just think for a minute, the Lord will prick your spirit like he did mine, because as soon as I said it, the Lord pricked my spirit. It was like he repeated it back to me and said, you're cleaning the unseen. See, my mom and dad are coming down, and I'm wiping, I'm, I'm lifting up the stove. Who lifts up? Nobody wants to lift up the stove. <laughs> you don't know what's under there and growing under there. You just like that. Nobody sees it. Let's just leave that hidden. God says, lift up the stove, amen. Wipe it clean, amen. You need to get ready for me to come in because I'm getting ready to do a work in your life. Take my hand, amen. Yeah. Reach underneath the refrigerator. That dust is flying. You know it is. I opened up the door to the closet of the central air. Amen. My filter ain't been working in a while. See, sometimes we think stuff's working good. My air was still cool. Sometimes we can go through the movements and think we still got what we had, amen, 20 years ago. But if we get down and get real with God, amen, we're a little stopped up on the inside. Amen. Our soul is clean. It's like a shows. They went and had a zapper for the dust that flew down the central air unit. He pushed it. He hit on a thing and dust flew down and hurt his zap. He said there shouldn't be dust in there. He said you need it cleaned every once in a while. Amen. Are you listening to me today, ladies? We need it cleaned every once in a while. Just because you got a bug zapper in your soul, amen, to take care of those dust mites falling, don't mean that it don't be shook up every once in a while to make sure it's truly clean. Amen. Every one of you's got a conscience. Every one of you knows good from bad. Every there's something wrong with you. Surely knows. Amen. The children know good from bad. Amen. But every once in a while, you got to get it cleaned out. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I knew I'd finally get there. Amen. It's in Luke chapter 11. And we're just going to read this one verse unless the Lord says something different. Number 39. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter? But your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. 
Now the Lord told me to tell you, He's not calling you wicked. Amen. He's not calling you a Pharisee. But He's saying, do you see the message? Can you clean the unseen? Amen. See women, you put on your garments on Sunday morning. And you fix your face however you think looks good. And you fix your hair however you think looks good. And you're packing the weight of the world on your shoulders. And then you pack this heaviness and this burden. But the breakfast still gets fixed for the kids. And then through the week, you're still taking them to school. And you still pack your burden day after day after day. And then until you can't sleep at night. And then the doctor may give you something for sleep. And then you have no appetite. And the doctor may give you something for appetite. Then you're depressed. So the doctor gives you something for depression. You go through all this day after day after day. And he's telling you, just come unto me. Amen. Let's get inside that soul. Let's see what is making you so restless. Let's get real because he already knows what your problem is. Amen. It's time that you get real with what your problem is. Amen. You, these Pharisees, see, they were, they were wanting to mock at him. He didn't wash up. He didn't do what he was supposed to do. He's supposed to do this. Jesus supposed to do that. And Jesus said, you come here, you look good. Amen. They probably had the best robes. They had robes that said, I'm a Pharisee. Amen. I have, I have Sunday morning clothes on. To a lot of people, my long hair says there's a Christian. To a lot of people, when they see me, no makeup, long hair, dress, especially up north, that's considered a, a very... You know, a lot of religions have that. And so when they see me, they say that's a Christian. I am dressed in a dress that represents who I am on the outside. Amen. But does it represent who I am on the inside? No. Amen. My light better be shining on the inside. My platter could be the shiniest silver. I could be the prettiest thing you've ever seen. Amen. But pretty is as pretty does, the saying is. Amen. They'll say, ain't that person beautiful? There's a person they talk about. They say, ooh, that lady's good looking. And me and my husband said, well, I don't know because we can't get past the attitude. We can't get past her actions. Amen. Amen. If I can't get past your actions, you could be a runway supermodel. Amen. And it would not matter because it counts what's on the inside. Now, I'm not telling you to do whatever you want on the outside because we need to use wisdom. I was at a singing last week and this lady was singing gospel songs, but I could have took a picture of her and I could have asked you, was this in a bar or was this in a church? And I don't think you would have known. Okay? I, I'm trying to use some wisdom with you. Can I get Amen. real with you? I mean, if you would wear that to a club, it's not appropriate for God's house. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Thank you, Lord. If a teenage girl is wearing that out to be noticed, you should not be wearing it at all. Amen. Amen. You should not be. If you're ashamed for the preacher to see you, and you might have grabbed your cleavage and hide Yeah. 
Thank you, Lord. We're going to go down to number six. I love this one. I was reading them. I started at one. But when I got to six, I mean, it just pricked my spirit. So Psalms 51, starting at six. And I love it. This whole psalm is my underline that tells about what it's called. It's called a prayer for cleansing. Amen. A prayer for cleansing. Six says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inner parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. I want to just stop there just a second. Amen. He desires you to be real with him. He desires you that not on the outside be that shined up cup, and only on the outside. But he don't mind you looking good on the outside. But you better have the inside, amen, where it needs to be. That's what truly matters. See, if your soul is where it needs to be, amen, your outside is going to follow. You're going to be condemned, like I said. You're not going to look like you were singing in the bar last night up here worshiping for God. There's going to be a change come over you. Amen. You're going to have condemnation. You're going to have wisdom. You're going to have knowledge. Amen. So, and it says, Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Amen. He can give you the wisdom you need. Seven says, Purge me with the hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And the hyssop was uh, the branches that they used when they dipped in the blood that went over the door, you know, so that the angel of death passed by. So that's where your significance of there comes from. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones that thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Amen. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me within thy free spirit. Amen. He has for you freely today. Amen. He has your joy back. Amen. You may be dealing with things, and you have no joy. How many of us can smile, amen, in the midst of pain? It's so hard. How many of us have a song in the midst of sorrow? Amen. It's so hard. But if we truly believe the Word of God, we can cast our cares on Him. And we can know that He loves you. Amen. He knows what you need of. It's time that we get real and clean the unseen. Amen. God wants to restore in you the joy of your salvation. How many of you tonight want more joy? Amen. We should all want more joy. Amen. This world is tough out there. It is hard. Ain't that just 
like us? We want to just hide it away. John come in and said, Honey, does the house the house smell kind of funny? No, it's not that. And I'm thinking, Shh, good, because them biscuits tasted funny. <laughs> but he ate them, and I ate them, but I could taste it. See, a bitterness in your mouth. I knew what I did, Lucy. Will you, will you ever would know what we fall short in? Come on. Yes. I mean, if we were children here today and I had to teach you what was wrong, it'd be different. But we're grown-ups, amen? amen? And we know what we do wrong. Like I said, I'm controlling. I don't want, I, I learned this about myself just the last few days. I thought about how do I enter a room? You know, people that are shy and withdrawn, sometimes they've been hurt, and so they'll enter a room quietly. Sometimes people like me, who was hurt at a young age, will enter a room very boisterously too, because they want to control that room. And the Lord pricked my spirit on that today. He said, even who you are that's outgoing, and you may think it's a positive thing on your part, sometimes that's just you trying to control the situation again. See, if you just listen, He's going to teach you what is wrong with you. If you just listen, you already know, you may not know the extent of it. See, I didn't know the extent. Like I said, I thought I had given forgiveness. And God said, no. Now, I am a better Christian now because I finally overcome that hurdle. I quit wiping the mud. Amen. Now, do I need to clean the stove a little better? Yes. I'm always going to mess up. I'm always going to have imperfections. I'm always going to have the cucumber laying in the bottom of the refrigerator that I had intentions on using. Amen. See, you have intentions on using the goodness of God, but every once in a while, your intentions are not good enough. And so you just let that gift kind of lay there. And you know what happens? It sours. Amen. It gets old. It gets decrepit. It's not usable anymore. Do you want to be the old nasty cucumber that got in my fridge? Or do you want to be used by God? Amen. Amen. God's good. Okay. I love the Lord tonight. I love how He's real with us. Amen. And, and I, I, the last women's conference I did, I, I spoke for about less than 20 minutes from beginning to end. And it, I've been saved since I was 16, and I've been saved like almost 20 years. I'll give mine away. Some of us have been barely saved. But like the old song, you ain't seen nothing yet. Amen? I still ain't got a baby, Lucy. I got a lot I can learn. The Lord taught me when I went on that BOSU ball and did not reach for help. He pricked my spirit, and He said, you do be the same way. You say, Lord, I got this.
ministry, amen, but he still wants them clothes washed when he gets ready to get in the closet for his work clothes. Now, if they're not in there, there's been times he'll go wash them himself, but I know he's not happy with me, amen, because that's my job. Now, I'm not trying to be sexist or chauvinist, but I'm telling you, as women, we know we are to take care of those around us. Amen. But who takes care of you? Amen. The Lord takes care of you. But too many times, we don't want to depend on anybody. Come on. Amen. I, I've got so much to say, and I don't want to touch on everything tonight, but I want to tell you about Lisa. See, the best way I can help you is to show you my faults. And you may think, what? You're supposed to be strong. You're supposed to be perfect. That way we can all be strong and perfect. Well, we're not strong all the time, and none of us is perfect, amen? So I'm going to tell you some of my faults. I already told you I like listening to different music. I, I like watching different things on TV. Not everyone always helps me. I'm smart enough to realize that, and I work on that. But I'm also a control freak. I don't need a show of hands, but there's very few. See, I, I've claimed, we all clean the house many times, but you can clean the house in a manner to hurry up and get it done and go do something else. Or you can say, okay, Lord, I've got today, and I don't have to really do nothing. I think I'm going to put this certain CD on, and it's going to play some good gospel music, and I'm going to crank it up loud, and I'm going to enjoy my day. See, as I'm doing stuff in the house, I don't always hear the words on that CD. It could have been anything playing. Amen, but don't you know when the presence of the Lord is in the room, whether you understand the words or not, it could have been playing a whole different Amen. It still fed my soul. Your soul feeds on what you put in it. Amen. Amen. If you got old rock music playing, I love all kinds of music. I will tell on myself. There is hardly any genre of music I do not like. I am a music person. I can flip through the channel on scan and I probably can sing along with anything it lands on. Amen. I'm telling on myself because I love music. Amen. But I know that if I need something for my soul, I'm not going to get it from the rock. I'm not going to get it from the country station. Although from time to time, they may play a gospel song. The majority of the time, though, I'm going to hear junk. Amen. I was listening the other day, and I'll just tell you, if you've heard this song, it's extremely perverted. It's talking about blowing a whistle, and I'll just leave it at that. Our children are being told filth. Amen. Pure life filth. It don't matter where it's coming from. It can be your TV, and I'm not preaching against music. I just told you I love music. I'm not preaching against TV, amen? I have like four, okay? I'm telling you, know what you put in your soul. You may say, well, yes. I don't really know if I even believe in a soul. No medical doctor ever found a soul. Amen? How do I know there's even a soul that exists? Maybe it's just something the Lord's talking about. Amen? There's a soul. Because I feel it burn at times. I feel it inside there and it ain't heartburn, amen? amen. I feel shoulders. Amen. You pack this heaviness and this burden. 
but the breakfast still gets fixed for the kids. And then through the week, you're still taking them to school. And you still pack your burden day after day after day. And then until you can't sleep at night. And then the doctor may give you something for sleep. And then you have no appetite. And the doctor may give you something for appetite. Then you're depressed. So the doctor gives you something for depression. You go through all this day after day after day. Women that are probably not control freaks. Okay? Because, and it's not always our fault. See, we have to control the children, the family, the husband. The school's always calling wanting us to help volunteer. Amen. There's always something that we got to do. So we start controlling everything. Well, I went to work out the other day, and the Lord placed me with this, this sweet little trainer girl. And she, she said, I can train you for free because I've not got my, my full certification yet. The Lord did all this. You don't get a trainer for free. And this Lord had this girl had problems, and the Lord has placed us together. And I thought I was going to be help to her. And she has me stand on this thing. It's a ball on top. It's flat on the bottom. And I don't know if you've ever stood on one. They're called a bosu ball. And when you climb up on this thing, you're climbing up on a ball. Okay, so can you imagine? You've seen them in the circus acts, right? Well, I mean, as far as I know, I'm not a circus act, and I can't do that very good. So what's Lisa do? I've got this trainer in front of me that's like this, in her spotty position. Just like Christ is right there in his spotty position every time you need him. Come on. And what did I do? I get on this ball and I'm teetering. No, I'm going this way and I'm, I'm back off. I can't do it. And I get back up there. The whole time she's standing here like 